meet her functions and her mandate under Article uh, 165 plus 4? What was the necessity of the delegation of this function? Those are pertinent issues, Your Lordship, that requires clarification before we go to the root of the matter, the crux of the matter. It's our submission, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice, who is exercising delegated powers, cannot further delegate the Deputy Chief Justice. That's why the Constitution is in white and black, that the obligations and the duty belongs to the Chief Justice. Finally, Your Lordship, the reason why we find ourselves in this situation is because of what the court is struggling to explain to us. That three fires have graciously generated expediency, and other fires that were consolidated, that six file with the lead file two for 522, have no reasons why they should be before you. Noting that your lordship, those matters were equally satisfied as urgent and raising heavy constitutional matters. When I looked at your orders, your lordship, that you issued to on us today, you repeated the same, that they raise weighty constitutional matters. Why are we being discriminated by the court that our files are not considered as a priority and that the, pri the files with orders are the only ones that the court is sitting on a Saturday? The chief justice is empaneling, the, the deputy chief justice is empaneling the bench. We are called, like, uh, in a lightning speed, to appear before you. Is it not because there are some orders that the state wants to vacate? You we cannot run away from that reality, your lordship, most respectfully. My lord, with your kind permission, for the record, uh, Dr. Kamoto for the fifth respondent, in his reality. I believe the reason we are here and the reason why we took forum is because we recognize that there are different parties in these proceedings. <coughs> so it will be abominable for a section of the parties to seek to colonize these proceedings and treat them as if they are the only ones entitled to the audience of the court. So in this regard, my proposal is as follows, that each of the parties who has, whose representation has been taken, gets an opportunity to indicate to the court what applications they have before the court, so that we're able to proceed methodically. And each party then, the court can then give directions on how we move to treat each of those applications. Otherwise, we may be here indefinitely if each of the parties takes the opportunity accorded to make lamentations, to make speeches, <coughs> and to mourn. So we respectively urge that we get an opportunity for each of the parties to ventilate the issues because the federal respondent has a pending application which is duly filed, a preliminary objection which even contests the jurisdiction of the High Court to hear the matters because it is a matter relating to the nomination of a presidential of a deputy president, which in our view lies squarely within the domain of the Supreme Court. So we want a court an opportunity procedurally, we shall ventilate all those issues and hopefully the matters being raised or to be raised about recusal and so on, they will fall by the wayside. Thank you, my lord. For the fifth interest, for the first interest party, Mr. Lawyer, I was about to interject uh, when Mr. Uh, uh, when Council, uh, uh, Mr. Nottenberg, the other one. The Yes, because I was uh, addressing, and that is exactly uh, why I wanted to. I wanted us to have order in the way we, we, we conduct this proceeding. And I was about to ask Mr. Ndegwa, uh, after all that, what is your application? Your Lordship, I'm very clear in my application. My application for which I have We are now making an application. You respond. What is it that you want? Your Lordship, permit me to make an application under the Mutunga rules <coughs> that following the disclosure of the court this morning, that was made by Justice Murema, 
that this honorable court does determine whether the Deputy Chief Justice has the power to empanel the bench under Article 65, Clause 4. Your Lordship, and whether if she has any power of that nature, the same ought to be communicated to the members of the Republic by the Chief Justice that that is to say, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice has delegated her powers under Article 65, Clause 4 to empanel this bench. Your Lordship, this is the background of my application that on the 14th of October 2024, the Honorable Chief Justice did, did empanel this bench to hear and adjudicate over six matters which were consolidated with the lead file being 522. And the files that were consolidated your lordships, my lady, were 522, 509, 537, 528, 525, and 506. Your it is our humble submissions that this bench was exclusively and panel to handle those files. And that the communication was effectively made to the parties by the Honorable Chief Justice. I am giving the background of my application. And that we are aware that subsequently other files and the most important one is E014 of 2024, which came from Kerogoya, was equally selected for empanelment before the Chief Justice. To date, Your Lordship, there is no communication from the Office of the Chief Justice other than this morning that this file was equally empaneled and designated for hearing by this judge. Your Lordship, the other, uh, the other ground is this, Your Lordship that when we appeared before you on the 16th of October, Your Lordship, we sought your indulgence, Your Lordship, to have a further mention on the 18th of October. Well, I'm sorry, we are constrained to interject to uh, seek your guidance. My name is Muzomi, appearing for Professor Kindiki. Listening to my colleagues, he is making an application before this bench complaining about wrongs supposedly made by the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice in bringing us to this session of today. For me, the clarification I wish the court to provide is whether an application of that nature can be made informally without the CJ and the DCJ being made parties to that application and being offered an opportunity to explain so that uh, to be fair on uh, these state officers, it's easy to speak to the gallery and cast all manner of insinuation and aspersions against them. And if my Lord finds that an application of that nature cannot be made informally without actually filing a formal application and joining the CJ and the PCJ so that they have a chance, to respond to these insinuations, I suggest again, and I beg the court, I'm a very junior counsel, but Professor Mugay wonders that we run the risk of coming to a court of law to speak to the gallery. In parliamentary language, what I fear is happening is what is called filibustering, my lord. To filibuster is why you go to a forum intended to deal with the business of the day, and you keep making speeches upon speeches that have no bearing on the business of the day where the motive is to ensure that the business of the day is not productive. To the best of my knowledge, 
the business of the day were there were applications on their side. There were applications on our side. And the court was graced enough to give both sides an opportunity to come today to ventilate those applications. Instead, we've lost two hours, my lord. We have not been addressed on those applications. We are just filibustering. My lord, my lord perhaps if I may. Yes. Yes, sir. My lord, you are being invited to interpret articles 161 and 163, 1B, 1 and 2, which designate the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice as head and deputy head of the judiciary. And you're being asked to inquire into the manner that they perform their duties as head of the judiciary and to interpret Article 165.4. That can only be a substantive, through a substantive application to which all parties must respond. I, I think my concern then, and Edward and uh, my friend uh, Kibe, is that you are taking the court for a long ride and you are ending up wasting a lot of time in the court. I wish you could go to the issues. If the question is, if you are ending up with an application for the disqualification of the bank, why can't you go to that point instead of beating around the bush, as you'd say? Well, Lord, if I may, um, just to bring it to the court's attention, that the issue that uh, my learned colleagues have taken up um, rather dramatically this morning is an issue that they have taken up with the Chief Justice by way of a letter. Before they came to court, they have taken up those issues with the Chief Justice by way of a letter. If that is the avenue that they have chosen, then let them deal with it by way of the letter. It isn't anything that should take your Lordship's time. That letter remains. They have written it to the Chief Justice. We have been copied on the letter, and we await the learned Chief Justice's response to the letter. It isn't anything that should take up time this morning. My Lord, please, the